Recent evidence at Cooper's Ferry may change the way we look at how the American continents were populated. Reporter Hayden Wilcox has the story. OSU's Rifle Club gets ready for a shootout with an NRA and ROTC supported target competition. And finally, what's the deal with the jellyfish in the quad? Students raise awareness for recycle mania. We'll have all this and more on tonight's episode of the Beaver News. Good evening and welcome to your Thursday night edition of the Beaver News. I'm Allison Headley. And I'm Gabriella Morangello. We're glad you could join us tonight. OSU Student Events and Activities Center invites you on a journey around the world. This term, various culturally focused student organizations will be holding activities to promote their culture, beginning with Mong Night in the MU Ballroom from 6 to 9 p.m. this Saturday. Doors will open at 5.30 and a traditional Mong dinner will be provided for guests. Admission is free but limited to the first 290 people. The program will include different performances by OSU students and community members promoting the central theme of the event, which is the Hmong New Year. Historically, the Hmong New Year was created to give thanks to ancestors and spirits and to welcome a new beginning. Skits, dances, and musical entertainment at the event will teach community members more about the Hmong New Year. Sunday until Tuesday, starting at 10 a.m. and ending at 4 p.m. at the LaSalle Stewart Center, OSU will be hosting the 2012 Harvesting Clean Energy Conference. This is the Northwest premier conference of agriculture, forestry, and energy industries to further advance rural economic development through clean energy. This is the 12th year of the conference, which draws some of the best presenters with real-world experience with getting successful projects built as well as growing jobs. You can register to attend the event. For students, farmers, foresters, ranchers, and other private individuals, the registration fee is $140. And for professionals, the cost is $240. OSU students are eligible to receive a travel grant for the students from the state, excuse me, from the Student Sustainability Initiative, which will cover up to 75% of the registration fee. You can register online. Last night, we showed you a closer look at how archaeologists excavate and what tools are used at a field site. Tonight, we are continuing our investigative series produced by Beaver News reporter Hayden Wilcox. Hayden was able to travel with Associate Professor of Anthropology, Dr. Lauren Davis, this past summer for an inside look at what it means to be an archaeologist. Tonight, Hayden will be explaining the significance of the research. This report was supported by OSU and the Bureau of Land Management. Many people have asked, why Cooper's Ferry? What's the point? In 1997, Dr. Lauren Davis dug a test pit that revealed artifacts that turned out to be some of the oldest found in the country. But that turned out to be just the tip of the spear point. So far, evidence that we've obtained through excavations suggests that people may have been visiting this part of the Salmon River Canyon as early as 13,000 calendar years ago. Little did we know that Cooper's Ferry would turn out to be one of the most important sites in the country. This site is really on the cutting edge of kind of the reassessment of how people came to North America in the first place. And its rise to the top began with finding one of these. And what else I want to show you is the thing that might be the most exciting discovery we've made in a while. These western stem points get their name from their unique Christmas tree-like shape. Distinctly different from points found east of the Rocky Mountains, points once thought to be the oldest in the country. Stem projectile points may represent the earliest peoples in the Pacific Northwest. Archaeologists have debated about whether or not stemmed projectile points and fluted projectile points share some kind of evolutionary line. The Clovis verse has been the argument for so long and the things we're finding here are going to kind of transform the way we think about how people came to America. So what we're looking at is um, a projectile point, because you can see it's been worked on both sides. I believe this is a, a stemmed point. It's Stay with us as we continue to break the story as we report from Cooper's Ferry Archaeological Field School. This has been Hayden Wilcox with the Beaver News. Starting again on Monday, we will continue to run this segment every night, Monday through Thursday, with coverage of different subjects. Tune in Monday as Hayden shows us what kind of artifacts these archaeologists were finding and how these clues can lead to a better understanding of the past. 
This Sunday from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m., the ROTC Prone Match will be taking place at the indoor target range. The match is for all students who are currently enrolled in the Reserve Officers Training Corps ROTC program at Oregon State University. The contest serves to promote camaraderie among the students enrolled in the Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marine Corps commissioning programs. It also promotes the practice and participation in precision shooting. Every year, an overall highest score service or team is named, as well as the top four individual shooters. The cost to participate in the event is $10 per person. Pro-gun Oregonians from all walks of life are coming together amid current controversy surrounding gun control. More than 1,000 people gathered at the Capitol in Salem Saturday to pro protest further restrictions on gun ownership. As reported by the Daily Barometer, Nick Russell, who has owned Albany guns, coins, and jewelry for 30 years, has seen an enormous increase in gun sales recently. In line with the national trend, the demand for concealed handgun permit applications in Benton County has also increased, according to Sheriff Diana Simpson. Every year, the Oregon State Rifle Club hosts the NRA Intercollegiate Sectionals which all club members are eligible to participate in. The match is an NRA full match and is shot on the NRA standard target. A full match is a competition where all shooters will attempt to shoot four targets from all three positions, prone, offhand, and kneeling. 400 points are possible for each position and 1,200 points are possible overall. The NRA International Rulebook governs the match. The cost is $20 for an individual and $20 per team and takes place at the indoor target range and is this Saturday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Looking for some good, clean, all-American fun? Tomorrow night, the Mick Alexander Fieldhouse will be hosting its Western Windup event from 8 to 11 p.m. Students who attend will have the opportunity to ride a mechanical bull, take swing dancing lessons, and participate in a cattle roping contest, all while listening to live country music. This Friday's event will feature the band Cloverdale, a married young country duo who have worked with country singer Jason Aldean's band, as well as other famous production teams in Nashville. Students are able to purchase pre-sale tickets for $5 at the MUPC office or pay $7 at the door. This, this event is open to the general public for $7 pre-sale and $10 at the door. Recycle Mania will continue this week. You may have noticed yesterday that three jellyfish have taken up residence in the MU Quad. These jellyfish were made by the Waste Watchers who are launching the Recycle Mania Challenge this week in order to promote recycling at OSU. The jellyfish are made from scrap film plastic and umbrellas, and the igloo is made up of plastic bottles. Both pieces represent how much unrecycled trash is thrown, at, thrown out at OSU alone. Recycle Mania is a recycling challenge in which colleges and universities will compete all term. So look out for more events as they occur, including a repair fair on Monday the 28th from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. in the recycling warehouse. A large university like Oregon State has a lot to offer when it comes to clubs and events. With everything going on, there's something for everyone. That's right, Gabriella. You can get involved with sports, volunteer work, student politics, and yes, even gaming. Last weekend, Beaver News reporter Dan Felder went for an inside look at OSU's gaming club to show us what exactly gamers do when they're together. Could you tell us um, all the awesome stuff that's happening right now? Well, out there, we've got a LAN party going on, a uh, bunch of computers and all that. Up on the big stage, and we're projecting out this screen. There's another room on the far end, and we've got console games playing in there. We had a huge Smash turnout last night. The room we're in now, they like board games and card games and stuff. That's what we were doing here last night, and we were packed. What are they wrapping for? Tons of pride. We have, what, keyboards, graphics cards, sometimes processors, motherboards, and everything to make computers. What are the most popular games? League of Legends. How long have you been awake? 20 hours straight? I've worked for 40. How many people are here? 230, 240. It's like Gamer Mecca right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This season, the Beaver News is proud to introduce a new segment to our Thursday night lineup. Every Thursday, Beaver News reporter Christy Wilkinson will present your OSU Political Pulse. Thank you, Allison. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Wilkinson with this week's political news that affects your life. This Thursday, the Pentagon made the decision to allow women in combat. This new rule rescinds the 1994 rule that kept women from being formally assigned to combat units. This new change in military operations will happen no later than 2016. 
Defense Secretary Leon Panetta had this to say in, in, in the address to the nation, quote, if members of our military can meet qualifications for a job, and let me be clear, I'm not talking about reducing qualifications for the job, then they should have the right to serve regardless of creed or color or gender or sexual orientation, end quote. Oregon State Le Legislature is back in session. On Monday, January 14th, 60 elected state representatives were sworn in as members of the Oregon 77 legislative session. These members were sworn in by the Oregon State Supreme Court Justice Thomas A. Balmer. Representative Tina Kotek of North Portland will be Speaker of the House, and Representative Chris Garrett will be Speaker Pro Tem. We will be bringing you updates from the Oregon 77th Congress. Tuesday night, ASOSU invited MUPC students and MU employees to their town hall meeting. The town hall discussed student rights, specifically the first year experience. The first year experience requires all freshmen to live in the residence halls for an entire school year. The town hall meeting was in the, Ameri was in the Native American Longhouse from 5 to 7 p.m. This new, new rule creates an interesting dynamic for co-ops as well as Greek housing. Roughly 20% of these institutions' structural finances come from freshman members who live in. Without those students, it could place a strain on these organizations. We'll bring you more information as the story unfolds. This has been Christy Wilkinson with Your Political Pulse. Thank you, Christy. Well, that's all about the time we have for you tonight. I'm Allison Headley. And I'm Christy Wilkinson. Thank you for joining us this evening, and be sure to catch us again on Monday, right here on 7, at 7 p.m. on KBVR. Have a good night.